So just to clarify, by, um, by lazy, I don't mean a crappy developer. I mean like a, a smart developer, someone who will automate a process that they've done over and over and over. Um, so I'm going to look at a way how I, um, a tool I'm building to um, help uh, automate unit testing on the client side. So yeah, John gave a good intro. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I was uh, tweeting a little too much yesterday. Uh, got a bit carried away. Um, I've got a blog, the CSS Ninja. Um, they've got a sticker up here. Uh, I've got heaps of them. If you want one, come, come see me afterwards. Uh, I've GitHub uh, modernizer team member. So I hack on modernizer. I've been officially part of the team for about probably just under six months now. But I've been uh, doing pull requests and you know fixing bugs and uh, doing that for quite a while now. Um, and we have a giant test suite. So Paul Irish originally put this together. Um, it's quite massive. We've got about 630 odd tests now. It does a whole range of stuff and just makes sure we're not breaking anything when we commit. Uh, you know, it's, it checks that we're not leaking any global variables other than modernizer or the IE print protector variables. Uh, checks out that the classes have been added to the uh, HTML element. Um, and then checking if we're actually adding the classes to the HTML element correctly um, and any of the properties. And further down, we've got the API methods. Um, so modernizer's got a bunch of methods in there. The, probably the most used one is add test. Uh, if you go on the, the GitHub repo, you'll see there's a feature, uh, feature detects folder. And that's got a whole bunch of community uh, plugins that people have written uh, outside of the core team. Uh, and we eventually plan to move everything out of the core into, um, into the add test function. So the, the, the core will just be those methods you can see down there. So we've got media queries. Um, so you can test a media query in the browser. Uh, my favorite is uh, prefixed. So you can pass in a unprefixed uh, DOM property or CSS property, and it'll return a prefixed one for you, depending on what browser you're in. Uh, so it's really useful. And you can also bind it to a function um, using uh, function.prototype.bind. So it's really useful. Uh, and uh, we also use can I use data. Uh, so Damon mentioned that uh, yesterday. It's a website that's got a whole bunch of uh, tabular data on what features, what browsers, and uh, what they support. Um, so we map our modernizer results um, to can I use, and we see if we've got any mismatching results, and like if can I use is incorrect, or we've got a failing test somewhere that we need to fix. Um, but client-side unit tests are hard. Uh, you know, we've got like six desktop browsers, and you've got multiple versions. You've got you know, IE 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, you've got mobile browsers, which is more relevant now, so we're trying to test a lot more in mobile browsers. Um, and it's really hard. You know, I don't have 300 different mobiles to test on. Um, and you know, being on a Mac, it's hard to get um, access to IE all the time. So one way we helped uh, sort of automate this process, um, Jed mentioned Travis CI in his talk. Um, so it's continuous integration. I hooked it up recently. So when we commit to uh, GitHub, we'll then pull down our latest commit in Travis CI, and it'll run it through uh, PhantomJS. So PhantomJS is a headless web kit. Um, it'll load up our test suite HTML page. Uh, it'll spin up a static node server and then run our test suite. And then what PhantomJS does we have a special script that goes in there and scrapes the Q unit results and then spits it out um, on Travis CI. And we've got like a nice little image on there saying if, uh, if the build's failed or, or passed. Uh, so we can know, and we get email notifications uh, if it fails. Yeah, so headless WebKit, uh, but it's not a real browser. Um, it's based on WebKit, so it's pretty close to what Chrome uh, and what, um, uh, what a lot of the mobile browsers are running. Um, but it's, it's not a real browser, so you always need to test in real browsers. Um, but it's good, really good for general use. Um, I've also got a GitHub repository uh, with a template to get you set up doing client-side unit tests uh, in Travis CI, so you can check that out. Um, yeah, like, so you also always test in real browsers uh, because, because one feature might work in one browser, but it might fail miserably in another browser, and that makes it really hard. <coughs> So how did I solve this the lazy way? So I didn't, you know, it's, it's a lot of effort just to load up uh, a test suite in so many browsers, and you've got to visually scan it, you've got to see if they're all passing, see what's failing. Um, yeah, it's really, really uh, hard. So uh, automation. Um, so I built a tool uh, that runs client-side unit tests through the command line. Um, and I went to Mimi Generator. Uh, success kid is always, is always good fun. Um, and it tests in real browsers, so it'll, you have a bunch of slave browsers connected to my command line, so this will spin up like a, um, a server, that's uh, like a, a static server that's f uh, feeding my um, test suite. And I can connect a bunch of browsers to that URL. So you'll notice the URL at the top there, if you've loaded that, 
uh, you might get an error, but when I fire up the server, that'll, that'll work. So if you want to load that up on any devices, that'd be awesome, especially the playbook. I'd be interested to see if that works. Um, and I, so along the way, to build this tool, I, I, rather than reinventing the wheel, I used a lot of, um, a lot of really good tools that are already out there. Um, first one being browser stack. So uh, Jed mentioned this morning there was another service called uh, Browserling. Uh, browser stack similar to that, um, but they've got an API. Um, and a jQuery developer, uh, Scott Gonzalez, wrote a node module called Node Browser Stack. So then uh, I can use that in my command line tool, which is written in Node. Um, and that allows me to communicate with Browser Stack. I can pass it a URL, I tell which browser, uh, which operating system, and which version I want to launch, and I'll pass that URL to it uh, and connect to my command line uh, tool, and I can easily test. Also use Yeti. Um, I'm not for sure if many people have heard of this, but it's a really, really awesome tool by Yahoo. Um, and it's pretty much the backbone of the tool. It, it spins up the server and it allows me to feed out a HTML page or a test suite page to a whole bunch of devices. Um, unfortunately, Yeti requires UE Test Runner. Um, and I, I, I don't know anyone who uses UE Test Runner um, suite. Uh, jQuery, uh, sorry, um, Modernizer uses the Q unit. Uh, a lot of people use Jasmine too. So I fixed that. I uh, wrote some adapters. So you can uh, include that in your test suite. So there's a QUnit one, I wrote a Jasmine one too. I don't actually use Jasmine, so, but I just did it like a little demo test suite and that seemed to work pretty well. Um, yeah, so you can drop that into your test suite and then you can pass it straight into, um, into Yeti and you don't have to use the UE test runner or rewrite any of your tests. So hopefully you loaded that URL. I'll go to my command line here. And I've, got a, I've just got it spinning up, um, oh, here we go. So I've got lots of devices connecting. That's good. Uh, so just so you can see visually, I've just loaded up Opera Mobile with that there. So we've got a whole bunch of connecting. Hopefully it slows down in a second. Um, we'll just run there. So I run that. That should load a URL. Do so you see that loading on there? That does a test suite. It comes back, tells me something's failed. There's too many people connecting. You can see there, it's told me, okay, Safari 4, an Android device. It's told me that a, a global variable's leaking. It, was, it wasn't expecting Chrome. So that's a, that's, that's a pretty, pretty hard test to do because it's, it's got a, just a JSON string of uh, globals that we're expecting and that we want to filter out. So if it's got any unexpected ones, uh, a lot of mobile devices, so it's, it's probably um, a good test to just drop because uh, there's so many unexpected global variables in mobile devices. And you see there, it will also come up with script errors. Um, if you've got something failing, it will hook into the window to on error event and print it out nicely back into your command line. Um, so we jump back to... So that demo works, yay. Um, I also did use a service called CodeStream, which allows you to record your command line. So there's a video you can watch of me uh, doing it. Um, but if I jump back to command line, I'll just cancel that. Uh, I can also specify browsers. Um, so I've got one here. So rather than relying on a, uh, a conference to be on and have a whole audience to connect to your test suite, I can use Browser Stack API. So this then goes through, um, so it's a pretty arbitrary sort of system I used here. I'll probably improve that, like let you pass in a file or something with a list of browsers. So I've got to launch that. That will then go off to browser stack, hopefully, and launch uh, a window uh, IE8. So you see a browser stack, uh, it's launched IE8, Opera 12, Safari 5, Firefox 10. I just used a bunch of browsers, then iPhone 4. So you see now I've got some connecting. Um, so depending on the browser, sometimes they're faster, sometimes they're slower. So IE6 is really slow to connect to a browser stack. It just depends on the environment. So that's firing up. Um, if I go to the other command line, I've also, I can also query how the, how the devices are going. So that should hit, that will, that will then use the Browser Stack API. Uh, that will then query all the devices I've launched. Um, it's been really slow. And that will come back telling me which, which are currently running and which are currently queued. Um, and it'll limit you to uh, probably roughly 10, 10 devices at the moment because it's still in beta and it's still changing. Um, they only recently updated to add mobile support. The original version one of the API 
only a desktop, um, but they're, they've recently added support, so they've got um, all the iPhone devices, yeah, so that's come out now. It's telling me that the Opera, Opera Firefox iPhone is all running in i8 and Chrome 20 are queued up. So I can run that, that'll then send off the same, same way, so that spins up like a tunnel service um, behind the scenes, just using um, a thing called PageKite. So then that way I can connect back to my local host. Um, uh, you can use something like show off or local tunnel if, if you want to use that too. Uh, so that, so that way they, they can get to my local hosted test suite, um, run it, tell me and get all the, the results back. Um, and I did, I did a test last night, there's too many people connecting now to see so it, but you can see there the Safari 4 and Android 2.3 is completed uh, without any errors. And if you have too many devices connecting while you're running the test suite, then it sort of, sort of breaks a bit. So. But if you've got a, like a controlled environment where you can control how many devices are connecting, it's, um, it's really awesome. Uh, so I did a test last night. Um, I've got like, um, I can do B to specify browsers and I can also specify just iOS and that'll then go off and launch iPad 2, iPad, uh, iPhone 3GS, iPhone 4, um, and all different versions of the uh, operating system. Um, so then I can just, if I'm building like a phone gap app, um, for, for iPhone, I can go off and do a run of test suite on my, um, my um, client side tests. So that's really awesome. And so I can do, also I can do Win for Windows browsers. I can do Mac. Um, there's also Opera and Android as well. So they've got a whole bunch of devices connected. That's really good. So we go back here. So I've uh, affectionately called this tool Bunyip because it's an Australian version of a Yeti. Um, it's, uh, they hang around billabongs and whatnot. Uh, it's not yet released, I've sort of spaghetti code behind the scenes, so, so I'm going to clean it up and put it on the GitHub repo, get it all up there. Um, and like I demonstrated, you don't need browser slaves, um, you can connect browsers. Um, and I also mentioned tools here, so Selenium is really pain in the ass to get set up, and I just wanted an easy tool just to be able to fire something off, test it, and forget about it. Um, there's testling too, but the downside with that is, that, so that's got command line unit test as well, um, that's the browserling mob. Uh, but you need to use their, their um, testing framework, um, and it's only, it's only um, you can only pass a JavaScript file, you can't pass a HTML file that loads in all these resources. Uh, test Swarm, which is that Node Browser Stack module is written for, this is a, a environment done by um, jQuery, so they, they use Browser Stack as well, they launch all these services, they send off their test suite, and it goes and does its thing. Um, but it's not about immediate feedback for them, so that's like a, it's a server running, so it's like a Selenium server. Um, but they all had restrictions and they didn't really answer what I wanted to have, so I went and built my own tool. Yeah, thanks. Um.